Now, in damning figures provided exclusively to Good Morning Britain, the British Dental Association has identified the areas across the country with the worst provision of NHS dental care. They say the number of people on NHS dentists' waiting lists reaches 600,000. So, the worst area for accessing care on the NHS is Norfolk, with 38% of people unable to see a dentist over the last two years. Closely followed by Cornwall and Cambridgeshire, where 34% have failed to get appointments in the same time. Meanwhile, Coventry and Warwickshire was actually the best area for accessing NHS dental health care, although 13% were still unable to get an appointment. If you're one of those 13%, that's too many, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we're joined now by former NHS nurse Janice Gordon, who resorted to pulling out seven of her own teeth because she just couldn't get an NHS dentist appointment. And Dr Stuart McCants, who runs a dental practice in Norwich and mm. gives talks in schools about dental hygiene, where he says some of the youngest children have never used a toothbrush. Thank you both for joining us. Janice, if we can start with you. Goodness me, I can't begin to imagine what sort of pain you must have been in to have to pull out seven of your own teeth. How long had it been or has it been since you've been able to, to see a dentist? Before COVID. So we're talking about 2019, early 2020? Yeah, yeah. And, and so, Janice, what happened? Because clearly you had a dentist at that stage, but then COVID... Was that when did you get struck off or why did you suddenly lose that opportunity? Well, really, it's my fault because um, I'm terrified of the dentist. So I only went when I needed to go. I didn't have regular checkups. Now suffering for it. Um, but now I pull seven teeth out. I have now only got um, three teeth on the top um, and one of my front teeth is loose. And one of my bottom teeth are loose. Yeah. So... I, and did, don't know where, I don't know where to turn. And um, how many dentists have you rung over the last year or two to try and get yourself on an NHS uh, dentist Count, patient list? Countless. I've lost count. I've lost count. And what have they said to you? Sort of how long is the wait? Like they count. put you on a list, don't they? And how long have they said it'll be before you can get one? I'm, I think I'm on one waiting list, and there's three years. Janice, can you just try and describe what goes? through your mind when the only option you have left because you're in so much pain is to pull out your own teeth? Well, it's not being able to eat properly, not being able to talk properly. Um, I know I lisp a little bit now because of the loose tooth, but it's just horrendous. Um, dentists in Norfolk is ridiculous. And did you ever it... consider going private? Because I'm assuming if you if you did, then you would have been able to find to go private. Exactly. Yeah. Tell us a bit about the kind of prices you must have looked at and thought, no way. I've looked at, and it's around about three and a half, th uh, two and a half to three and a half thousand pounds to have the rest of all my teeth out and a set of dentures. That's all I need. So a, two or three visits to a dentist. That's all I want. Yeah. And uh, I, and I, I'm sorry, I but Janice, you were a former nurse as well. So you understand the importance yeah. of doing anything, any procedure in a safe medical way and how vital it is to, in, yeah. not in, to ensure there's no infection and all those sorts of things. You've got this one last loose tooth, or at the moment you've got a loose tooth. What's your thoughts about what's going to happen with that yeah. tooth? I'm trying to keep it. Um, it's very loose at the moment, but I'm just worried what I'm going to look like, my confidence. Yeah. Um, um, can I, I just... get? I talk about it and I get close to tears. Oh. Of course you do. Oh, Janice, it's a horrible situation for you to find yourself in, and sadly you're not alone, are you? Um, let's speak to our dentist then, who actually is one of those rare things who actually does do a, a majority of NHS work. Can I just quickly get you to give us the numbers? So, Janice says that what she needs would cost three and a half thousand pounds if she went private. If she were to go on the NHS. Uh, what would it cost her? Well, on the NHS, um, you pay uh, band, uh, band of treatments. So the extractions alone, uh, if you just had those done, would cost uh, a single charge of £70, 70 pence. But you then want to have dentures, it would cost you a charge of £306.80. That would cover everything in that course of treatment, which is the extractions, any fillings, uh, scales and polishes, and, of course, the uh, dentures as well. 
It's, it's a huge uh, difference. It's a huge difference. So, I mean, as Ranvi says, you are doing NHS dentistry. How can you make it work? And so many other dentists around the country clearly can't, because we're inundated with dentists saying we'd love to do more NHS dentistry. We just can't afford to. Well, it's not without its challenges, that's for sure. Um, and I know a lot of colleagues that are, uh, I've seen since the start of the pandemic. Um, these, these problems predate the pandemic as well, uh, let's not forget. And um, stress levels are increasing, for sure. Uh, and morale is dropping. Uh, and a, lot, a lot of colleagues, including myself, will um, to make it work, will work through lunch times, will work later, uh, pull double shifts, uh, cancel days off. Um, but that only goes so far, and we're also only human as well. So uh, we're doing everything we can, um, and some just can't see it. Some can't make it work, and that's, that's you know, I stand by those people as well. But you do find time to go into schools, don't you? Tell us what you've seen, the worst of what you've seen, and how shocked you've been. Yeah, absolutely. So we've, we've got a great uh, team here called Happy Smiles Club at our practice, which is, uh, was set up by um, nurses and one of the partners here. And we go into to schools. We started sort of last year and we've kind of ramped it up this year. So we go into schools just trying to access children that have not got a dentist. And what that's done is really highlight um, just how much decay there is um, present that's not being treated. And we're seeing large numbers that haven't got a dentist. Um, and we're taking we sort of take on the kids to do the emergency care. And then the plan is to basically revisit these schools on a regular basis um, to at least give them one, at least one visit a year uh, to, give, to deliver oral health education and then treatment where required. Well, they're very lucky to have you going into those schools and trying to help because it's, it's, it's not easy for anybody. And, of course, it's really not easy for Janice. Janice, we wish you all the best and, and fingers crossed something turns up somehow. Yes. But you are certainly not alone. And, Stuart, thank, thank you, you. For, for joining us this morning and trying to explain a little bit about I it know, all. But I know it's interesting. Janice says, you know, she says, I was afraid of the dentist. And I think what the dentist is doing, they're going into schools, is really important. Don't be afraid of the dentist. Just go if you get one. Get it done. Yeah.